Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I want to show you something that I found at my local ReStore. For those of you that never heard of a ReStore, it's just like a Goodwill store or a Habitat for Humanity store. People donate all kinds of goods to the store. The store turns around and sells those goods and the money goes to help people in need. Now when I go to the ReStore, I go to three different sections. I go to the tool section, I go to the electronic section, and I also go to the main counter. Now around the cashier is a glass showcase. So I started looking inside the showcase, which was covered with so much stuff that you could not even see what was inside the showcase that they were trying to sell. So I started clearing a whole bunch of things out of the way. And that's when I spotted this. When I spotted this, my eyes practically bugged out of my head because I knew exactly what it was and what it was worth. What you're looking at is a metered Variac. It's made by General Radio, also known as Genrad, and it was a company that was in business for about 85 years. I think they closed up operations in 2001, and they made all kinds of electrical and electronic test equipment. The company was located in Concord, Massachusetts. A large amount of that equipment was purchased by the U.S. military and U.S. government. Taped onto the Variac was this piece of paper right here from eBay showing an auction for a similar Variac of the same brand. Now the one here appears to be a little newer than the one I have. And you can see the plastic cover is missing on the gauge. This one has it. There's a dent right here. And there's also a dent by this knob. And in that condition they were asking $350 with $50 shipping. Since they were unable to test the Variac, they put a price on it of 200 bucks. $200 is an incredible buy for this Variac because if you go to buy one of these online, you're looking at between $550 and $1,000. But believe it or not, I didn't have to pay $200. And the reason being is that everything in the store is 40% off. So whatever anything is marked, you take 40% off. So 40% of 200 is 80. So that brings the price down to a ridiculously low level of $120. I was all ready to pay $120, walk out, very happy. And then the employee told me, you know, this has been sitting here for about a month and a half. And we also have a rule, something does not sell. We take off an additional 10 or 15% per week. So you're not going to believe what I paid for this. Let me show you. Donated hardware, 200. 40% off is 80, that leaves 120. And they take 60% off of the 120. And I only paid $48 plus tax, 51.36. An incredible buy, a buy that I will probably never find again for this type of a Variac. I have no idea when this was made, but by looking at the gauges, and comparing it to the type of gauges that I saw in the abandoned military base in the Bahamas that was from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, I would have to say that this unit is either late 60s or early 70s. I'm not sure if the unit is new surplus or if it's been refurbished or if the person that owned it hardly used it and took very good care of it. But I really like this older US made equipment. The handle is made out of solid aluminum, or if you're British, aluminium. The entire metal housing is steel with an enamel finish. And the gauges, this is all metal and glass, no plastic. The output voltage is displayed right over here on this analog gauge. And on this analog gauge, it goes up to 10 amps to measure the output current. Have this older style plastic rocker switch. And in here is your fuse holder. Just push it in. And just pop it right back. And this plate is all aluminum. The knob right here is made out of Bakelite. And it turns so smoothly. Look at that. Now these Variax can be modified and it's very simple to do. But the way it's set up right now, you have a 220 to 240 volt AC input. And if you put this right on line with this arrow, you're going to have the exact same voltage that's coming into the unit leaving on this 220 volt receptacle. If the knob is rotated full counterclockwise, that's going to be zero volts to there. If you'd like to go a little higher, 
you would go to the same spot, that's line, so now you're at 240 again, you advance a little more forward, now you're going to increase that voltage. So this is very useful. If you have an AC line that's experiencing lower voltage than normal, it might be down around 200 volts or 210, and you want to get it to that 240 range, all you would have to do is rotate this clockwise. The weight of this Variac is right around 26 pounds. Okay, let's spin this around. And you can see there's a bolt right here, there's one over here, and there's two underneath in the exact same spots. Once I remove these four bolts, I can lift this handle all the way up and we can remove the back cover. Let me do that so we can take a look at the inside. Alright, and these bolts look pretty damn new for their age. Okay, let's loosen these on the bottom. Leave that one in so it doesn't flop open. Okay, let me stand this up and pull off the back. Very carefully pull off this cover. Hmm, hopefully it don't fall, no. Wow, look at that, that is beautiful. And here's a look at the inside of the cover. Before I straighten this up and move the camera in much closer, let me go over how an auto transformer works. Right over here is the winding and that's the windings that go around the large toroidal transformer. You have 220 to 240 volts being input into the Variac. So you're going to have a 120 volt leg here, 120 volt leg here. When the two are connected together, you have your 240 volts. Now as you can see over here, one of the 120 volt hot legs goes straight through to the secondary side. Over here, you notice that one of the input legs, 120 volts, does not go to the end of the winding. It's tapped right over here. Over here is your secondary side, or your output voltage. And if you want to have a full 220 to 240 that matches what's on the primary side, over here this arrow indicates the knob. As you rotate the knob, it's going to tap a different location on the winding. So in order to have the same output voltage as the input voltage, you would put the knob to where it says line. When you put it to line, this arrow is going to go right over here. And it's going to connect directly to the 120 volt leg on this side. And like I said earlier, this side is already connected to the 120 leg. So you'll have the full output voltage to match the input. If you want to have higher voltage, because the input voltage is too low, all you would have to do is rotate that knob past line clockwise until it gets to this point right here, the end of the winding. So you, over here you have the full voltage of the winding, which is 240. This section is going to be additive to the voltage. So you'll add that extra 40 volts to the input voltage, and that will be your output voltage. If you only want a 120 volt output on the secondary side, it's very simple. You rotate the knob until the pointer here is directly in the center of this winding. So between here and here would be this point right here. The arrow lined up there, 120 volt output. The closer you tap the winding to this leg over here, it's going to bring the voltage lower and lower and lower until it reaches zero volts. Now this Variac can also be converted from a 220 input or a 240 down to a 110 or 120 volt input. And all I would have to do is find the center point of this winding between here and here, which is this spot right here, and I would take a wire, tap the winding, and go straight out. I would use this connection here for my neutral leg, and over here I would tap with the hot. If I wanted to have a higher voltage than 120, I would simply rotate the knob to bring the point where it's tapped further and further this direction towards the end of the winding. So I'd end up with a 280 volt output because it's more than halfway across the winding. If I went this direction, it would reduce the voltage. Okay, let's take a much closer look at the unit and then power it up. And you can see way down here is that very large toroidal transformer. You can see the windings wrapped all the way around. Right over here is the carbon brush holder that makes contact 
with the top of the toroidal transformer. Let's trace the power all the way into the unit. All of these wires that are very colorful have a braided insulation on top and they appear to be either number 14 or number 12 stranded copper. The copper is tinned so it's going to have excellent corrosion resistance. All of these ring connectors are very thick. They're copper and tinned. You can see the wire from the 220 right here, which is green, goes to this very thick aluminum plate. It's around 3 8 to 7 16 of an inch thick or 10 or 11 millimeters. After this point where the ground wire is connected, it goes all the way up to the ground prong on the 220 receptacle. The receptacle used in this unit is a 15 amp 220 receptacle. Over here are the two hot wires coming in, goes to the center part of the switch, and down here are two more connections. So when the switch is put in the on position, power from this leg transfers to this pin, and power from this leg transfers to the yellow wire. Once that switch is in the on position and the power transfers to the bottom wires, you're going to see that the yellow wire is the feed-through wire that I showed you in the schematic a minute ago. It goes to the voltage meter and then it goes all the way up and over to the receptacle. Over here you can see there's a yellow wire that's also tapped into the leg that feeds through to the receptacle and that goes to one end of the toroidal transformer. More than likely, right over here at this end, you're going to see this yellow wire tied in. You can see there's a brown wire right here coming off the switch and it goes into the toroid. That's going to tie into the winding in the exact spot where the brush holder is. So right about there it's going to tie in. Now what determines the voltage output is this orange wire. You see right here it's tied into the top of the screw. It goes into this metal plate and this metal plate ties into this huge aluminum disc. The brush holder is bolted into that disc and wherever you rotate this, it's going to send power into the aluminum disc, into this piece right here, and into this wire. Over here, you can see the orange wire goes over to the fuse holder, and then it goes with this red wire to the voltage meter. The red wire goes over to the current meter, and then the blue wire goes to the other leg of the receptacle. Down here, you can see there's a counterweight bolted onto this disc. Very nicely made and there's a hole here for a reason. If you ever wanted to disassemble this, there's a screw right here and one over there along with a hex key that you'd have to remove this. This would slide off. You could take the entire thing apart and if I wanted to change this from a 220 volt variac to a 120 volt, it would be very easy. Okay, let me put this back together and power it up. Now that it's back together, I'm going to plug this into a 240 volt receptacle. I'm going to put this all the way counterclockwise, which is going to be zero volts. And I'm going to be using a 120 volt drill. Of course, I cannot plug the drill into this receptacle because this is a 15 amp 240 volt receptacle. So I did make this adapter cable. This will plug into here and the other side is going to be 110. Now the first thing I want to do is make sure there's no dead spots on the transformer. So when I rotate this knob slowly, the voltage should gradually go up and gradually go back down. I also want to check to make sure the needles don't stick and I want to check the accuracy of the voltmeter and amp meter. Let's turn the knob and see. So far, so good. All right, let's turn on the voltmeter. And according to this meter, it looks like 280 volts. So let's test it. So the meter is pretty accurate. If I could leave that in there. Let's slowly go back. I'm doing this up. Oh, see the needle just stuck. And that happens with these older units sometimes. Sometimes they'll loosen up if you use it enough back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. 
but if it doesn't, I'll end up changing out just that one meter. Let's go down a little bit more. And all the way down to zero. 0.825 volts. Now I'm going to connect up the drill and we're going to see what kind of current shows up on this meter. Then we're going to check to see if the analog current meter is accurate. All right, I'm going to leave the drill over here with the trigger squeezed and let's slowly increase. This is nothing to see. Now what I'm going to do, very carefully I'm going to do this, I'm going to take this like this, plug it in like that. I take this lead, very carefully put one there, and let me squeeze the trigger, compare the current here to the current there. And from my angle, it looked pretty close. All right, let me try a hair dryer, more current. Working extremely well. You can see how it sweeps left and right very smoothly on this gauge. This one sticks once in a while right around the 150 volt range. Let's hook up a light bulb. I'm going to hold this off to the side. So that's 124 volts. Let's go all the way to zero. Let's bring it way up. About 175, baby. I don't want to push it. You see, it's tried sticking right around that 150. But this is perfectly smooth. This is working great. Everything appears to be working very well. And guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, subscribe, and share the link to this video on social networking sites. Thank you very much for watching.